Hi, I'm Rodney West, the Functional Lead at ISOS Technology. I'm here with Crystal Wise, one of our managed services leads. Today, we're going to talk about cloud enterprise key service differentiators. Thanks, Rodney. So cloud enterprise users are going to benefit from key feature and functionality enhancements over the premium plan. These are tied to the level enterprise versus premium and apply to the broader set of tools, Jira software, Confluence, Jira service management, and cloud premium. So yeah, let's dive right into it. The first key differentiator to consider for uh, for the enterprise model for Atlassian Cloud is that it's designed to have a global scale with unlimited resources, right? So yeah, premium, you have you know a larger step up than you had from standard, but basically the enterprise level is, it's exactly what it says in the name. It's for enterprises, right? It's for the large organizations that are used to working under under those larger IT models, right? It's the ones that traditionally have, you know, like more complex setups for their data center nodes and a lot more complex requirements, more users. They're going to be heavier hitters on the tools. They're going to have a lot more users. The tooling is basically, it is so business critical that there is significant revenue loss or just cost associated with any downtime to the system, right? So this is really what it's designed for. It's basically, you know, keeping it at that level that is for the enterprise. So, you know, one of the things you look at, it's kind of standardized in single instances. So basically it lets you work quicker speed. It lets you scale more rapidly at the cloud inside of that level, right? So basically you're going to, to the point I was making on the complex node structure for data center, a lot of times you'll see to where you may have burst nodes that show up or things like that that you need to support your enterprise users. You know, same thing in the cloud, right? It's where you're going to need that ability to scale up both long-term and also, you know, short-term burst scaling. You still have the ability in the case for enterprise to have multiple instances. And, you know, I know that a lot of times you talk about, okay, let's consolidate all of your instances down into one, which is great. And from a governance perspective, you know, it helps out a lot on the governance side. But there are cases where this doesn't make sense, right? You have, you know, large, and when I say large, I mean like, you know, 10,000 users in one region and 20,000 in another, you know, that are separate, kind of effectively separate organizations underneath your whole umbrella, that's a case where you may want to have them separate into different instances. So basically you may want to break on organizational units that have that are larger groupings or ones that just need to be, you know, fully separated. You know, maybe you need to keep your legal finance and HR kind of in their own, in their own federated instances and your engineering teams go in another instance, right? But you still want to manage that underneath the same enterprise umbrella your same account umbrella. You don't have to set up all these different cloud accounts and then you're having to deal with the billing and the user reconciliation across those. Instead, this gives you the, there's the ability if you're using the enterprise scale to, to actually have that multi-node differentiator. We also have the whole mergers and acquisitions part of it where, you know, for smaller organizations, you may be bringing on smaller companies in your M&A and they're easier to consolidate. But as you have larger enterprise organizations, you may be bringing on, completely full-fledged companies in, so as under an M&A. So you may want to actually keep those inside of their own cloud instances, but under your st- same, the still, same still management umbrella. You know, so it gives you that, that data segregation and stuff inside of the system. The other thing you have is where kind of the data for, for the instances live, right? So you, you want to make sure you're in this region and you have these data residency requirements. Okay, then those instances are going to be using the data residencies there versus, you know, U.S. has different region potentially. So that's kind of one of the really good things with the enterprise level is it allows you to make those decisions more at that structural level for your Jira architecture on is everybody glommed into one instance or do I have these differentiated instances for reasons X, Y, and Z? And, you know, in that model, you know, you can segregate your users to where, you know, some users are only able to access one instance versus another basically, you know, based on based on your user, usual Jira controls and, and however you have your, you know, Atlassian access set up. But you can also have users that can actually operate cross instance in an easier fashion than if you actually had completely like different billing and licensing across those different instances. Absolutely. And, and you alluded to some of these great topics that I'm about to cover with the admin controls, right? You know, if you've got all of these multiple instances, but you've got, you know, a set of admins or an admin that's trying to cover across all these instances, you're going to need one place, right? One place to manage everything. And so in this model, we have, you know, admin level controls so that, you know, admins can go ahead and, and manage those users across the multiple instances and products. It supports change management and it minimizes the 
the shadow IT principles, right? You've got your centralized admin hub that you can, you know, cross instance and cross product where you can assign users to instances, configure security policies, monitor trend or user trends, right? And automate uh, user provisioning and deprovisioning. So, you know, when you're on and offboarding people, obviously, if you've got a large organization, this can be a heavy lift. So this allows you to kind of automate that process and establish, you know, the governance and the processes around that, which is so key, especially for security type reasons. So again, like you mentioned, the centralized billing, that's a huge thing. You know, even though these different instances might need to be governed in certain ways, depending on where they're located in the world, you can at least, you know, handle the billing and these controls in one area. So, you know, better address change management, like we covered each instance, they have their own sandbox. So admins can preview and test the sandboxes, but each instance will have their own. So you can configure changes in there in this admin panel, product updates, you know, new apps and automation rules. And also it just, again, that change management process helps you put the appropriate things in place if needed before rolling them out across the company. So, you know, release tracks also in this can be batched and continuous. So that's just another call out to mention. I, all these are great features. My favorite one still on there is the centralized billing, right? Because it is, so one of the things ISOS does whenever we go in and whenever we help organizations is we pull a billing report. And especially for large organizations, people are always surprised by all of the instances that all of a sudden show up that some team in the organization decided to create and pull up a cloud to spin up a cloud instance. And so you have all of these little licenses that show up and, you know, it's that death by a thousand cuts, right? You realize, wait a second, we're double paying for a lot of this stuff because the people using this one are using this one and this one. And we're paying license for this one, this one, this one, and for the add-ons for this one, this one, you know. So it's a definite thing on getting that all consolidated and centralized that is essential to effective cloud usage. So, you know, one of the other things, you know, kind of want to talk about, you know, some of the, the things on, uh, around, you know, advanced security and compliance that talking about the enterprise level, right? So basically the admins, you know, you can select at the instance level where your data is hosted. And that was something that, you know, I mentioned a, a little bit ago on, you know, the whole fact that that data residency is very important because depending on where you are in the world, you fall under different government regulations on your data. It's just it's just a fact of life and the way the world works now, right? Different regions have different requirements. And, you know, it's not going to be good enough whenever there's, you know, a government audit or something and they come in and go, okay, where is this? Or let's see your compliance records on this data. It's hosted over there and they don't have the same rules and sorry. Yeah, that's great. When I say that's great, I mean, that's a great way to get a fine, right? To get some sanctions tossed on you potentially. So being able to actually, being able to actually do some some level of localization for your data is very important, you know, for, for both meeting, you know, government and just your internal corporate compliance, compliance rules. Also, you know, the enterprise is the only plan that includes Atlassian access as, as part of the plan itself. And if you don't know what Atlassian access is, the name has access in it. It's governing your access to your Atlassian products. You know, they have the ability to hook in other tools into it. Like, you know, I've mentioned probably Okta, but, you know, that's one of the ones we see most common hooked into access for, you know, for your user provisioning and it hooks in into your lasting access. But one of the cool things with access is it gives you information on, on the tools and who actually is using the tools at a at kind of a high level, which is, you know, you know, a great feature. And it gives you more control on setting who's actually able to access the tools as well. You get the standard centralized access to all of your Atlassian products. Right. So, you know, this basically makes it to where it's easier for your admins to do what they need to do. If you're a, you know, a Jira admin or a Confluence admin or a site admin listening to this, you know how important that is and kind of how frustrating it can be sometimes when you're trying to figure out access sometimes to products. This centralizing is very, very important. There's some other stuff where like, you know, Atlassian has some really good documentation on, you know, how you can actually integrate SAML into your sign on. You know, like I said, you know, Okta is the one that we run into actually the most as far as hooking into the system, but, you know, setting up things that are as commonplace nowadays as having a two-step verification or access to, you know, basically third-party active directories is, is also essential at that enterprise level. 
All great points, Rodney. So let's not forget the enterprise level reliability and support, right? So you'll get financially backed 99.95% SLA. So that equates to about 21 minutes of downtime per month, which is amazing, right? 24 by 7 support, of course. They have a 30 minute response time for critical issues. So premium has one hour. So this cuts it down to about 30 minutes of response, which is great. You've got dedicated senior level support and of course, a phone support center, right? So you have a dedicated phone number so that you can get, you know, access to speak to somebody. That is an ad that's perfect. You know, how many times have you needed to just pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, help. This gives you a dedicated number for that. So Rodney, tell us how can ISOs help? Right. So where do we go from here? So ISOs can help in, in, a, in a number of ways in relation to kind of your cloud journey. If you're not on cloud yet or if you have some cloud instances that you actually need to merge, we can help you get you know from on-prem instances into the cloud. We can help with merges of multiple cloud instances or we can help with you know kind of a you know, hybrid approaches there where you need to move data center or your server instance up to the cloud and you already have a cloud instance you need to move that, merge it into or you know you're merging X cloud instances with Y on-prem instances. Outside of that, we can actually help you determine, you know, which actual model is best for you for cloud, right? It, it, enterprise is not for everybody. And that's one of the things to keep in mind, right? There are, you know, very specific reasons why you want enterprise and why you may need enterprise, why it may work best for you. ISOs will help you decide, you know, what you need from the Atlassian perspective. You know, do you need enterprise now? Is this something you're going to grow into in a year or in three years or in five years? So it's kind of that doing that right sizing, you know, and going, you know, just deciding and helping you decide where do I need to be versus where I am now? And what does that journey look like for me? A lot of times there's a secondary consideration. This is more poignant whenever we're talking about, you know, enterprise level migrations and, and organizations that, are actually working on prem at the enterprise level is that question of is cloud the right choice for you right so you know i'm already in data center so i'm already probably you know enterprise at this point does it make sense for me to move to cloud right now does it have the features that i need you know a lot of times for enterprises like there may be some business critical add-ons that that are needed and they either may not exist there may not be feature parity in the cloud so it may be okay this is something to revisit six months to a year to see if it's there. You know, so we also provide like kind of that review of going, is moving to cloud even the right choice for you at the moment? So, or is it the right choice for you down the road? I'm Rodney West, the functional lead at ISOS Technology. Thank you for joining Crystal and me today to discuss cloud enterprise key service differentiators. If you're interested in more details, download our white paper at isostech.com today.